Every year, Brazilians consume approximately 335 million liters of condensed milk. On average, each person purchases around 6 liters annually, which is equivalent to about 19 cans. This isn't surprising, considering that at least 3 out of the 5 most searched dessert recipes in Brazil on Google feature condensed milk as a key ingredient. But have you ever wondered how condensed milk is made? In this video, we'll take you through the entire manufacturing process from raw milk collection to final packaging. The history of condensed milk dates back to the 19th century in France. A chef named Nicolas Apert was looking for ways to extend the shelf life of food and discovered that boiling milk in hermetically sealed containers helped preserve it for longer periods. This was a revolutionary breakthrough at the time. However, it was American inventor Gail Borden who truly popularized condensed milk. In 1856, he patented a vacuum-based milk condensation process that removed water from milk without compromising its nutritional properties. This innovation allowed condensed milk to be stored for long durations without refrigeration, making it a crucial food source for maritime voyages and military expeditions. The product arrived in Brazil for the first time in 1890, imported from Switzerland, where it had been produced since 1867. At the time, it was widely consumed by the Portuguese royal court. The packaging featured an illustration of a young woman carrying a bucket on her head, and it was called Milkmaid. Because the name was difficult to pronounce in Portuguese, people started calling it Light Mocha, Milk Girl. The name became a brand in 1921 when the company opened its first factory in Brazil. The production of condensed milk begins on dairy farms. Across the country over 9 million cows are raised on around 60,000 farms to ensure a steady supply of milk. Over the last century milking has been greatly improved by technology. The part of the milking machine that attaches to the cow's udder, known as the teat cup, mimics the motion of a human hand, applying pressure to extract the milk. While a farmer can manually milk about 6 cows per hour, a machine can handle nearly 100 cows in the same time, making the process much more efficient. However, milk quality depends not only on machinery, but also on animal care. Well-treated cows live longer and produce more milk. On large dairy farms with around 7,500 cows, technology plays a vital role in improving animal welfare and maximizing production. Some of these farms use rotating milking carousels or specialized milking parlors, where up to 80 cows can be milked simultaneously. This process happens twice a day, and cows with a stable routine adapt well to it. Modern systems increase milk flow by up to 30% compared to traditional machines. Before milking begins, farm workers clean the cow's udders with an iodine-based solution to maintain hygiene. The teat cup, which replicates the natural sucking motion of a calf, is then attached to extract milk. The process lasts about 7 minutes per cow, after which the machine automatically shuts off. Each cow consumes roughly 45 kilograms of food and drinks 300 liters of water daily to produce approximately 38 liters of milk per day, 7 days a week. Thanks to technological advancements and better nutrition, today's cows produce almost 3 times more milk than they did 50 years ago. A cow starts producing milk around the age of 2, after giving birth to its first calf. To prevent bacterial contamination, the calf is typically separated from its mother about an hour after birth and fed with bottled maternal milk. The cow then begins its milk production cycle, which lasts for 305 days, followed by a 60-day resting period before giving birth again and restarting the process. Milk consists of approximately 87% water. When a cow consumes food, it goes through a digestion process that converts nutrients into milk, which is transported through the bloodstream to the mammary glands. Extracted at a temperature of around 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the milk is immediately stored in refrigerated tanks at 2 to 3 degrees Celsius or 36 to 37 degrees Fahrenheit to maintain freshness. To become condensed milk, raw milk undergoes strict quality control. First, it is transferred to a 20,000 liter tanker truck and delivered to the processing facility. Factories like Nestle operate around the clock to meet demand, processing over 1.6 million liters of milk daily. Milk arrives at the plant in tanker trucks carrying between 5,000 and 7,000 liters per trip, ensuring freshness since much of it was collected just hours earlier. Upon arrival, the milk undergoes rigorous testing to check fat and salt levels and to confirm the absence of antibiotics, which is crucial for people with allergies. If it meets quality standards, the milk is transferred to massive storage silos. Some facilities have up to 12 silos with a total storage capacity of 2.8 million liters, enough to produce around 20 million cans of condensed milk. 
The next step is pasteurization, a critical process that involves heating the milk to a specific temperature for a set time to eliminate harmful bacteria and microorganisms without compromising its nutritional value. After pasteurization, the milk goes through standardization, where its fat content is adjusted to ensure the ideal consistency for condensed milk. During this stage, the fat is first separated and then reintroduced in the precise proportion needed. This ensures that the final product has the rich, creamy texture we all love. Now it's time to add the key ingredient that gives condensed milk its signature sweetness, sugar. Large quantities of sugar are mixed into the milk, creating its characteristic taste and thick texture. The amount of sugar added varies depending on the specific recipe and type of condensed milk being produced. Once the sugar is fully incorporated the mixture enters the evaporation phase where the magic happens. The milk is heated in a vacuum system which lowers the atmospheric pressure and allows water to evaporate at a lower temperature. This helps preserve nutrients and maintain the milk's flavor. During this stage, the milk loses about 60% of its water content, becoming more concentrated and viscous. After evaporation the condensed milk is quickly cooled to prevent sugar crystals from forming, ensuring a smooth and creamy texture. Next, it undergoes homogenization, a process that breaks down fat molecules into tiny particles, preventing separation. This step guarantees a uniform stable product, with an appealing appearance. Finally, the condensed milk is ready for packaging. It is poured into sterilized cans that keep it preserved for long periods. The cans are hermetically sealed to prevent air and microorganisms from entering. After sealing, the cans are packed into boxes and prepared for distribution to supermarkets and stores, ensuring that condensed milk makes its way to your kitchen. And that's how condensed milk is made. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.